Hello and welcome to our Omicron headquarters here in Klaus, Austria. I am standing in front of our four interrupters per phase, 220 kV circuit breaker, which has independent mechanisms, making this circuit breaker very complex to test. But to today we're going to show you how with our modular system, with our Sibano 500 test system, we can test this whole circuit breaker in one go. We're going to set up all our modules on the breaker and then without any rewiring we can do all common tests. While many other test systems also use a modular approach for such complex breakers, many of them have the disadvantage that they need their own power supply for every module. In our case, we developed the CBMC2 module. This is the advantage that we don't need, it doesn't need its own power supply, we only have one single connection from this device to our main device, and the communication as well as the supply for the module happens over this one cable. Every module has two um, current outputs where we can inject 100 amps and it has its two voltage inputs. So we can measure two interrupting, interrupting chambers at the same time. In this case we're going to need two modules on every phase, making it a total of six modules. We also are going to use the CBTN3. This is for motion measurements. In this case we have three independent mechanisms, so we also need to measure three motion traces at the same time. We could also use an analog uh, transducer, but in this case we're going to go with our digital connections. In order to be able to measure the three independent mechanisms with the coils and motors at the same time, we also are going to use this I.O. box. This is simply to have additional inputs and outputs to be able to measure all these auxiliary contacts and coils and motors at the same time without any rewiring. And because we have so many modules, um, we need this EHP1 in order to, to be able to connect to all of these modules at the same time. That's all that we're going to need, now let's connect to the breaker. As you can see we have already connected the first two chambers to our first uh, MC2 module. Now we're going to continue with the second. First of all we're going to mount the module itself to the center. This is just with a rubber string so that it can hang right here in place. Then we're going to continue with our current injection in the center. Normally we use Kelvin clamps, but in this case to ensure a good connection on this part here we use these Y clamps. This is whenever you're not sure about your connection. These are very tight and ensure a very good contact. Then we're going to move up in order to connect to the two outer sides. First of all on the left over here, just with these Kelvin clamps, one move and they're connected. And as well on the other side. And this is it, we've already connected our complete first phase with the four interrupters and now we're going to continue with the other two phases. As you can see we have now connected our 12 main contacts to the six CBMC2 modules. This only leaves us now with connecting the motion sensors and then to the three independent controls. Usually for motion measurements we use these rotary transducers, but this is actually one of these special cases where we can measure the rotary movement with a linear sensor. Let me show how we do that. Here we have already connected the magnetic stripe to this rotating part of the circuit breaker. So all we have to do now is move the linear sensor right in front of it fix it in place and then connect it to our CBTN3 module. This one is already connected to our Sibano 500 main device, so all that is left for us to do is connect the other two sensors from the other phases as well. We have now connected all our three motion sensors to the three phases and we can see here that we have our two EtherCAD hubs which were all the connections from all the modules come together. These EtherCAD hubs need their special power source, but since we're here on the ground level, this is not as critical. All that is left for us to do now is to connect to the three cabinets. So let's do that. Since we test this breaker quite regularly, we have created an adapter in order to save some time. This allows us to connect to the coils, to the motor, as well as to the auxiliary contact, all with just one connection. With all of our cabinets connected with these plugs, all we have to do now are the connections to the device. 
we have already one phase connected to our main device, one for a phase connected to our I.O. box, and now the last phase I'm also connecting here to the I.O. box. This means connecting the trip coil, as well as the close coil, the motor, and we are also measuring two auxiliary circuits, so we are also connecting these contacts here on the binary inputs. Now with all the hardware set up out of the way, we can actually go do some measurements. We use the software called Primary Test Manager and I have already everything predefined. So now we can pretty much go through the tests one by one, starting from motor current, timing tests, contact resistance test, dynamic contact resistance test, minimum pickup test, all without any rewiring or touching any of the hardware again. Let's start with a motor current test. As a result from the motor current test we get the three current curves in the plot view as well as the numerical results in the table view. With the springs now charged we are now able to perform a closing sequence. For the closing test we get the 12 main contacts at the very top. We get the six auxiliary contacts that we measured as well below and then we get the 12 resistance curves as well as the three motion curves and the coil currents all in one result. We are also able to perform more complex operations like an OCO sequence. So an open, close, open. For this OCO sequence we can now see that the breaker operated three times, it opened at the very beginning, it closed after 300 milliseconds and it opened again at the end. We can see again main contacts, auxiliary contacts as well as the resistance curves. Now we have shown you how to test such complex circuit breakers with the Sibano 500 test system. If you have any questions please feel free to contact us at any time. Thank you for watching the video and have a good day.